this is A, this is B, I am asking whether A is greater than B, you will see that from this point onwards, that is from B, from element number 3 onwards, this is true, you can see false, false, and then from third onwards, you see that it is true. Uh, this is also useful to uh, in very important calculations, for example, in image processing and so on, you would like to detect edges. So, you would like to look for a particular pattern and you may have a huge matrix and you can just go and find it and Scilab does it easily. For example, if I just say find of A greater than B, so it says that it is found in locations 3, 4, 5, right? And I can even say that tell me, give me the values of A such that it is, let me see how this will work, find of A greater than B. Let us see whether this works. Okay. This is A, let us do this for B. So, what I am saying is in the vector B, extract only elements com that correspond to find of A comma A greater than B. A greater than B correspond to 3, 4, 5. This says in vector B extract elements 3, 4, 5 and give it to me and it is 2, 1, 0. We can of course check that by typing B. B is this whole thing. B of 3, 4, 5 is 2, 1, 0. That is what we have got. So, Scilab is a very powerful tool. You can do lots of calculations, lots of um, very complicated calculations using this. Now, let me just uh, make this full screen. It is possible to do transpose. For example, if I have a vector which is a row vector, I want to take the column, I just transpose of this, I just say B equals A transpose. Okay, this has been cut off in the screen, but you can easily see this. A equals 1 through 3 and then I say B equals A transpose. Okay? So, that you see this, this is cut off. Let us go to the next one. It is possible to extract some parts of matrices easily. Uh, we will not spend too much time. I will just flash this. Those of you are, who are interested can um, uh, see what I do. So, here for example, I have created a matrix A and B matrix, in B matrix what I do is, uh, this by the way, this corresponds to row, this corresponds to column. I am saying in the rows, you start with the third row and then decrease it by 1, go up to 1. That means 3, 2, 1 is the result of this. So, this will come here first, third row and then decrease it by 1. So, I get this and then the first row and I am not doing anything to the columns. Columns remain the same. Of course, you can do a similar thing like you have, like I have done here also to permute the columns. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I have given a brief um, introduction to um, Scilab. Now, I want to talk about some of the nice things about Scilab and I want to talk about the importance in using open source software system systems. Scilab is free and open source software. It is efficient, stable and also reliable. It is in fact sufficient for most educational purposes. You do not need any commercial software at all. And I want to give you a small story, Scilab tech story. Okay, let me raise this. So, there was this um, Scilab, first ever Scilab user conference was held in France uh, last year. In fact, Ju July 1st, 2009. You can see that this was opened by, so I, in fact, I gave a keynote address. You can see it here. You can see the Scilab website. And uh, I gave this talk on the National Mission on Education through ICT. Okay. 
So, this is the keynote address that I gave. You can see it here. Okay. What is interesting is I also chaired one of the sessions and uh, there was a talk given by Dr. Terry Martin of CNES and he presented this uh, talk called um, uh, his, uh, this is the file that he used. Okay. Let me just see if I can open that file. Here it is. I have opened it here already for you. Okay. Let me make this bigger. So, use of Scilab for space mission analysis and flight dynamics activities. He presented this uh, uh, on behalf of CNES, which is the equivalent of our ISRO and he was a senior manager. He talked about how Scilab is widely used in their space activity in uh, telecommunication, RF analysis, navigation, attitude control, system analysis, dynamics and all kinds of things. Okay? In fact, he went on talking about this, um, this work and at the end of this um, his talk, I had a question, is there anything for which they do not use Scilab? Is there any calculation for which they do not use Scilab? So, I was really impressed by the way they have uh, used Scilab. And as you know that um, uh, the French uh, aerospace program launched several of our satellites through Ariane rockets and it is interesting to know that they used Scilab in many of those calculations. Now, why we should use open source software? It is because commercial software is very expensive. Maybe it is cheap for our students. Students use commercial software in colleges, but unfortunately it is not available at small and medium uh, scale companies. The reason is cost. I was uh, teaching a course called Embedded Systems for computer science students at IIT Bombay for MTech and PhD students. In a class of 25 students, I found that only one student had used Scilab. So, I asked him the reason why he used Scilab. Then he told me that he worked for an embedded systems company in the Pune region and his boss told him that uh, they could not afford uh, commercial software required for doing the calculations and it would cost very high. In fact, the, the price quoted was 2.5 crore and this student found that Scilab could be used. His, his boss told him that the commercial software 2.5 crore was, uh, was too high for a small company of uh, their size. Now, this small company, namely uh, the embedded systems company, was involved in making uh, high tech gadgets, uh, microcontrollers, and so on, used in washing machines, refrigerators, and so on and so forth. Um, and these are high value added segments. The profit margin is extremely high, okay, but the turnover is very small. Just uh, company of maybe about 10 people, they deliver something, complete the project, collect the money. Okay? But the turnover is very small okay, for small and medium scale companies. By the way, we have large number of these companies of the order of about 1000 in uh, Pune region, about 1000 in uh, Gandhinagar region, 1000 in uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad and so on and so forth. There should be at least 10,000 such companies in the country and these people cannot afford um, expensive software packages. In fact, many of our companies in India are small and medium scale by global standards. And if somebody uses unauthorized software in companies, there will be disasters, companies may have to close down, there could be jail sentence. In fact, even before that, the company itself will sue its employee 
In fact, there will be an agreement that the employee has to sign on joining the company that they will not use any unauthorized software. So, uh, and so the point is that most of the SMEs in India do not use any software because the commercial software is very expensive and if they use commercial software illegally, they will get into trouble. Okay? This puts companies at a great disadvantage. And of course, there is a business opportunity as well through open source software. It is possible for a budding entrepreneur to start a company using open source software, create, uh, create uh, simulations using Scilab for companies like, uh, for companies and also for ISRO, BARC and so on. So, I would conclude this uh, slide by saying there is no alternative to open source software. I will just uh, briefly summarize the Scilab effort at IIT Bombay. It is funded by the National Mission on Education through ICT. It is part of an open source software effort. Our activities are coordinated through this website, scilab.in. We have a links project. It is possible for people to come and create um, links to documents and also to rank them. We have an excellent textbook project. I would want you to visit this site and see this textbook project. We also have, um, have a project called Spoken Tutorials. Maybe I will talk about this some other time. This is a, these two are excellent documentation projects. Immediate plans are the following. The Gujarat government is planning to launch a statewide Scilab literacy drive. Hopefully, this will happen very soon. So, I would like to conclude this talk here. I want to thank you for joining me. Goodbye. It was very much informative lecture by Professor Karan Magdalia. I hope the students and faculty members uh, from various scholaries in Gujarat will make use of this lecture and use Scilab software routinely in their academics, teaching and research activities. On behalf of the Department of Higher Education Gujarat, I would like to thank uh, Professor Karan Magdalia for his informative talk on Scilab and sparing his valuable time for some work. Thank you.